on the edge of Canada's Arctic, along the western shore of Hudson Bay. It's easy to think you've reached the ends of the earth. In fact, you can feel like you're utterly alone up here. But then, out in all that white, a pair of sleepy dark eyes slowly open, revealing what we came all this way to see. And apparently, the world's largest land predator came to see us, too. I mean, for me, this is mind blowing, but. How rare is this to see here? Well, it's pretty common to see polar bears out here this time of year, but it's not as common to see a big old male like that just come and lay down right next to the buggy. It's unreal. So, yeah, that's a pretty impressive sight. The buggy is a tundra buggy. It's sort of a cross between a tour bus and a monster truck. And it's where Steve Amstrup does much of his work as chief scientist for Polar Bears International, a private group campaigning for the bear's conservation. Oh, look at here, he's getting up. So what do you, what do you, what do you think when you see that? Well, you know, I've, I've been working with polar bears for uh, 35 years now, and uh, I still, every time I see them, it's, holy cow, there's a real wild polar bear. It's, they're, they're just incredible creatures. We're near Churchill, Manitoba, a remote frontier town that proudly calls itself the polar bear capital of the world. It is isolated, to be sure. You can't even get to this town by road. But every fall, these giants of the north come here in droves to wait for Hudson Bay to freeze back over so they can start eating again. The polar bear's main source of food is seal meat, and the easiest way for the bears to hunt them is from the ice above. As their chow line grows on land, another migration rolls up to watch. Freezing. A quiet stampede of eco-tourists, anxious to catch a glimpse of an animal whose future is as hotly debated as climate change itself. In the United States, uh, we have listed polar bears as a threatened species under the U.S. Endangered Species Act. And they were listed as threatened not necessarily because of their current status, but because of what we anticipate their future status to be. And what he anticipates their future status might be has Amstrup worried, but he knows not everyone is wringing their hands. Currently, it's estimated there are between 20 to 25,000 polar bears in the wild. Now, to many, that's a pretty sizable number. And some of the bears, especially in the upper reaches of the Arctic, seem to be doing quite well. They lose about a kilogram of body weight, or about two pounds of body weight, for every day they're on land. Every day. But what concerns Amstrup the most are the bears here, who he says are experiencing the effects of climate change right now. These guys are on land now a whole month longer than they were just 30 years ago. We could say, well, yeah, one population might be doing well now, but we know that soon all of the populations will have less sea ice than they do now. Some of them will have no sea ice. Those who track sea ice levels, like the National Snow and Ice Data Center, say the seasonal ice here in the southernmost region of the polar bear's habitat is already melting earlier and freezing later. That means bears are marooned on land longer and getting hungrier. How long has he gone without eating a full meal? They came ashore uh, this year, I think, in uh, about the middle of July. And so he really hasn't had much to eat since then. In November, when we were there, the bears were spending most of their time just lounging about, trying to conserve energy, which makes them pretty easy to find and photograph. And let's face it, nothing makes for a better photo op than a scratching, relaxing polar bear. Oh, while they look as friendly as they are fuzzy, truth is, they are one of nature's perfect killing machines. Their enormous size and strength are part of the allure. I mean, so many people have told me now, this is their bucket list. 
Kevin Burke is one of Churchill's few locals, and he takes great joy in showing tourists his frozen backyard. A lot of the activity lately, as the new ice forms in, the bears are out checking the ice. Let's go down there and check it out. He drives one of those tundra buggies for Frontiers North, an adventure tourism company providing bundled up enthusiasts the chance of a lifetime. Whoa. Oh my God, oh my God. She's going after the other one. After oh, look at this. The bears don't seem to mind the intrusion. In fact, many are downright curious of the tundra buggies. On occasion, a bit too curious. And a lot of times, you, I've, you know, through the years, I've watched the bears, they're... From those, they'll push back and they'll get in the ground and they'll kind of walk along and stuff like that. So my, my, my opinion is, I don't think we smell all that appealing to them. We might not smell too appealing, but the food in town does. There are warning signs posted everywhere, reminding the town's residents to be bear aware, as they call it. And we quickly found out why. Okay, they're getting way too close to Mike now. Yeah. This mom and her two cubs wandered right up behind us on a busy road just outside of town. Mike, Mike. She came within a few feet of our camera only to be chased by another car of looky-loos back into the trees. Is it safe to walk around Churchill? Um, I'd say it's safe to walk around Churchill in the day. Uh, I wouldn't say so at night. Brett Willock is a Manitoba conservation officer. Right over here, you can see him walking away oh, from yeah. us. Yeah. His job? To keep polar bears away from people. Which is a good sign these walking That's away, a good right? sign, yeah. Yeah, we want that to happen. If they can't scare the nuisance bears away, well, they capture them. So back here is where we keep one of our traps. 50 to 60% of the bears, at least half the bears we capture this year have been at this trap. The wayward bears are brought here to what the locals call polar bear jail. make sure they're not tempted to come back to town again, the bears are given no food, just water. We don't want them to associate food to, to humans or to that building. We're gonna hold them in there for 30 days. That's 30 days closer to the, the time the ice is gonna form on the bay, which is when they're going to go out and hunt seals. And it's also uh, 30 days away from the problem behavior that caused them to go there in the first place. When their sentence is up, they're tranquilized and then airlifted back out into the tundra. Not lost on anyone here is the carbon footprint left behind by those who travel all this way to witness all things polar bear. So all the tourists that show up here, does that help or hurt? I think that for many people, seeing something in person seeing how things are now and hearing how they used to be, and seeing the magnificent species of the polar bear right in front of them, uh, suddenly they can become inspired in a way that they might never have become inspired before. You know, I studied polar bears in Alaska for uh, most of my adult life. And one of the last things I did was predict that they were gonna disappear, so. It's a little hard for me to talk about, but to think that they might be gone, I don't want to think about that. So I want to do what I can to stop it. And I think we are. I think we are making progress. Most agree progress was made at the Global Climate Change Conference in Paris last year, when representatives of 195 nations agreed for the very first time to lower planet warming greenhouse gases. In the meantime, the polar bears here and all around the vast reaches of the Arctic will continue to do what they have always done, survive the best they can in whatever conditions are thrown their way. <laughs>